Good morning, Matrix. Um, this is your lesson for maths. How exciting. So, um, I did send you the memo yesterday for the two previous exercises that you had to do. Um, the one with exercise 4.3 that we did on um, a Tuesday and then the one that we did today or yesterday. I don't even know. It's, it's about quarter past one in the morning at the moment. So, um, I'm not sure what day it is. It is Friday. Yeah, so we did it yesterday. All right. So um, exercise 4.3 and 4.4 you can mark. And then um, we're now going to move today on to present value annuities. Right. So as I said in my introduction yesterday or the day before, I can't remember because as I said, days at the moment are a bit confusing for me. Um, I only have a little mind at some points. So... Um, but when I introduced to you present values and future value annuities, we discussed that essentially, other than the exception that we did yesterday, but essentially a future value annuity is when you pay off monthly installments or quarterly installments or any regular installments and at the end of a certain amount of time you get a lump sum. Present value annuities is exactly the opposite. So it's when a big lump of money Lump of money. Is that right? I don't know. But when a big sum of money is given as a lump sum to you presently, hence present value, you see what they did there. They're quite clever. And you then have to pay that off over a certain amount of time. So I know it might have been a bit confusing that we used a future value annuity yesterday to deal with a loan. But I also wanted you to see that you we could use it there because we were basically looking at if he's investing money I think it was Bongani. If Bongani is investing money into an account, so let's just say he was saving. He was investing money into an account every month for, his, I think it was six years. And then at the end of that six-year period, that money that he's been investing every, every month would have accrued into a certain big amount with interest, which was effectively the value of his loan. Okay, so that's how a loan can also be seen um, in some cases as a future value annuity. All right, so... If you have your notes with you, please, I want you to turn to page 105 and we're going to be looking at example one. But before we look at example one, I'm going to go over the present value annuity formula with you. All right. So the present value annuity formula. And remember, you might you might remember in class that I told you that the present value annuity formula is very similar to the future value annuity formula. But um, there's like one or two small differences. So. Make sure that you're using the correct formula um, because it's easy to make that mistake in an exam. Okay, so I'm going to start with what's the same in both formulas. And that's exactly what you see now. Okay, that's what's, a, that's what's the same. The difference is in the square bracket. Instead of having the bracket first and then to the exponent of n minus 1, we actually now start with 1 minus the the brackets so that'll now be your one plus interest rate and that'll be to the power of negative n you make that look a bit clearer okay so that's now to the power of negative n okay and that's the main thing that you recognize that actually this is a a present value um annuity instead of a, a future value annuity okay so two things important number one present value annuity make sure that your n is a negative exponent and secondly it's the order of that square bracket. So with the future value annuity, it was the open bracket 1 plus r to the power of positive n minus 1. Whereas with the present value, it's 1 minus the bracket 1 plus r to the power of negative n. All right. So if we look at example 1 on page 105. Okay. So let's look, let's look at the example together and break it up. Okay. So a loan of 90,000 rand is taken to renovate a kitchen. The loan is repaid by equal monthly installments over a period of three years. Okay, and then they tell us that the loan is repaid by equal monthly installments over a period of three years. The interest rate is 7.5% per annum compounded monthly, and we need to calculate the monthly repayments. Okay, so a couple of important things that I want to tell you before we start. 
Remember that I told you that in future value, it's generally accepted that the first payment is at the end of the first month, if it's monthly payments. If it's quarterly, they'll tell you it's after three months. If it's semi-annually, it'll be after six months. Okay, so for future value, there's generally very little that you have to manipulate in the formula because the last payment is always at the end of the payment cycle and that last payment doesn't earn any, any interest. With present value, it's a little bit different though. Okay, so we've got to be very careful with present value that we make sure that we understand when the first payment is. All right. Um, if they don't tell you when the first payment is, then we assume that the first payment is made one month after the granting of the loan. Okay, if it's monthly payments. If it's quarterly, one quarter after the granting of the loan. Okay, and think about that logically. If you took out a loan at a bank, you went on the 1st of January and you took... Okay, it's New Year's Day, so it wouldn't happen. Okay, but for argument's sake, humor me. If we went to the bank on the 1st of January and we wanted to take out a loan, um, and they've said, okay, you can take out the loan of 90,000 Rand or whatever it is, and you're going to pay it over a certain amount of years, they wouldn't ask for the first payment on the first day you've just applied for the loan. That doesn't make sense. You get the money straight away, and then you start paying it off a month later. Okay, so why this is important and why I'm, why I'm raising it with you is that we have to be able to manipulate the formula if that changes from that default. So the default is that payments start one month after the granting of the loan. And you'll see that text often in questions. Okay, payments start one month after the granting of the loan. That's the default. That's the normal. When that's the case, we don't have to manipulate too much. Okay, and so we'll get to examples where we do have to manipulate, but just keep that in mind at this point. All right, so back to example one. All right, so the loan of 90,000 is taken to renovate a kitchen. So we're using this um, uh, present value annuity formula, and the present value represents the loan. Okay, that was given. So it's not like that future value example we did yesterday where you now have to grow that loan. Okay, don't make that mistake. The present value is the value of the actual loan that you get presently, now at the beginning of your loan period. All right, so let's start. 90,000 is the value of the loan that is taken to renovate the kitchen. So that's our P value. All right. Now, the question was to solve for the monthly payment. So we're solving for X. All right, 1 minus 1 plus, and then the interest rate is given as 7.5% compounded monthly. So it'll be 0, 0.075 compounded monthly. And then to the power of negative 36. It's negative N. So it needs to be negative 36 because it's a three-year repayment period. And there are 12 months in a year of monthly payments. So 3 times 12 is negative 36. And the interest rate at the bottom will be 0, 0.075 all over 12. Okay. So it's important, please, I'm going to say it again. You don't grow that loan on the left-hand side here. That's not the point because it's present value. In other words, this is on the day that you've applied for this loan. Um, they are working out what your monthly payments are going to be. Whereas in the example we did yesterday or on Thursday, um, because again, it is Friday already. It's Friday for me. Um, uh, the example that we did in class on Thursday, we were growing that amount because he was going to have to pay it back at the end of the period, you know, if he hadn't made any payments. So that's why we used that future value annuity and we started that amount on the left-hand side and we grew it for the 72 months, I think it was. Okay, so... You're now going to use your calculator in the same way that I showed you in class. I'm, I don't have a calculator on my iPad, so I can't show you. But let's just go through the process. You're going to multiply both the. You're going to multiply the left hand side, the ninety thousand, by the zero comma zero seven five over twelve, the denominator interest rate, and then you're going to divide that answer by the square bracket, the one minus into one plus zero comma zero seven five over twelve to the power of negative 36 and you get then an answer of x his monthly payment is 2799 rand and 56 cents right so at this point of the video i need to tell you that the notes that i took home i suddenly realized there are missing pages so i don't actually have the textbook with me 
that you are supposed to have so we're going to call it a day all right so what i want you to gain from this lesson effectively is what a present value annuity is what the formula looks like we've done that one example together and um hopefully you understand what we're doing and you understand the difference between the, the present value and the annuity and the and the future value annuity formula and you're able to see when you use one when you use the other okay but on uh, next week i don't even know what's happening on monday because staff are being vaccinated yay um but we will we will look next week at um continuing with a couple more examples before you start the exercises on um present value annuities Okay, happy days. Have a good day.